At the Pimax Realtor, I tried out both the Pimax Crystal and the Pimax Portal, and here's what I think of them and how it can influence the VR market in general. So first of all, I tried them out in the VR event in Gouda and in Rotterdam. In Gouda, I had a bit more time to try them out in depth, and in Rotterdam, with the VR Days or Immersive Tech Week, I was able to try them out a bit more comparing them to the 8KX because I was really curious how it would uh, stack up against it. So let's start out with the Pimax Crystal and this is the headset I am personally most excited about. This is because it's just insanely good looking and that's just really cool. So it currently is a bit in the prototype phase and in comparison I also tried out the Vario Arrow, the HP Reverb G2 and I personally have experience with the Quest 2, Pico 3 Link and Pico 4. So that's where I'm basing my stance on, on the actual headset itself. I did not try this with any controller, so it was just the HMD itself with either a uh, controller in my hands, like a regular Xbox controller or the not keyboard mouse or with a joystick for a flight sim. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Sadly, it's Bradley did say it is using the reference Qualcomm design and that it sucked. I can't confirm this or nor deny it. I haven't tried it myself. But keep this in mind, the controller tracking is not something I have tried. So one thing which is really good to know is that I only tried it out in PC VR. It was all connected to a PC and I was not able to try it standalone. And myself, I was a bit disappointed by this because the main selling point of a standalone device is that it also works standalone. So that was a bit of a bummer, but yeah, can't do anything about it. I do think they need a lot of developer onboarding in order to make standalone work properly because I have not seen any developer working on the game itself on the Pimax and they don't have OpenXR finalized yet, so OpenXR is a way to develop a game for one set of controllers and then it automatically works with all other devices which support OpenXR and this is no excep exception to it. If they get OpenXR working and if they have the eye-gazed foveated rendering working, that already is a huge boost to get developer support. Next to that, performance-wise, it is really high resolution, and I think fixed foveated rendering will be a big thing for performance. So only the things you're looking at will be sharp, and the rest will have a lower resolution, but because it's just where you're looking, you're probably not going to notice it that much anyway. So those are a few things which really matter for developer onboarding and standalone support, which I think is a bit lacking from their side right now. Also, I was not be able to try out any eye tracking. They told me it is working properly, but that there wasn't any verification from Toby and Toby did basically didn't allow them to do any kind of um, demoing without their proper verification that it works. Otherwise Toby might get a bad name if there are issues with eye tracking. I kind of understand that. So again, I also haven't seen any eye tracking. Um, other than that, let's get into what I did try. So I just tried the HMD and first of all, I tried it with a controller in hand. So I'm not sure what the actual game was. It was a bit like an open world RPG type of game and it looks stunning. So the visuals of that set are of course the big selling point. This has been the case for Pimax for a while with their insanely high resolution, high FOV, high refresh rate headsets and this is just a continuation of that. So the resolution is amazing. I'm not actually sure about the exact resolution. I will put it on screen right here. Um, but the resolution is insane, you don't see any pixels and even in stuff like Flight Sim, so Microsoft Flight Sim uh, I have tried, you could read every word on, word on every dial in the Flight Sim, everything was visible just like it would be in the real world and it was just insane. You don't get this amount of text read readability in basically any headset. Next to the resolution, the color was also amazing. They confirmed to me, or at least told me, um, that it doesn't support true HDR. So there isn't more actual um, depth information to the pixel, but using their color algorithms, it does look similar to HDR. So it's not true HDR, but the colors are a lot better. I tried it um, next to each other with the 8KX and it was mind blowing how much better the colors were and how much more immersed you are in the world when you're trying it. So that's just really cool, that worked great. Part of this is also because the local light dimming and it has a light dimming array because it, they use QLED. I'm not sure about the exact details. Um, so the colors are amazing, the resolution is amazing and the field of view also is just great. I'm used to the Quest 2 or the Pico 4 right now and just having the bigger FOV just 
is a lot better for immersion. I also tried it next side to side with the Fargio Arrow. And well, I did notice that the um, FOV was similar. The Vario Arrow actually did a lot of distortion for me. And with the Crystal, it didn't have any distortion whatsoever, or at least not any perceivable uh, distortion. So you really got the full vision um, of the VR experience, which was just great. The 8KX has a wider FOV. There goes one of my foam panels. Awesome. Yeah, here we go. Uh, that, that's the first which was to fall down. So the 8KX has a wider FOV um, than the Pimax Crystal. But myself, in the quick time I had to try it, I didn't notice it that much because, well, you are usually focused on the middle and not on the corners of your eye, then you will just turn around. So let's talk about the actual build. It is actually built quite solid. It is really big and as with most of the Pimax headsets, it's basically trade-off like it's bigger, but the HMB itself also is just a lot better. Um, so this is a bit if your preference is working out in VR. Like I do a lot of workouts in the Pico 4 right now. This isn't going to cut it for intense VR workouts. But if you're on great visuals and like basically any other game which is not like super intense high pace, then this will be just fine. So what are the make it or break it for this headset? I think overall the HMD is incredible. It looks great, but there are a few things they really need to get down and they need to get it down right. First of all, the tracking, if the controller tracking sucks without any base station, so just a regular controller tracking in standalone, if this sucks, the headset basically will be terrible. This is what most people will use. They will get that set, put it on, try it out with the controllers included. If this isn't good, it's just not a great headset and a lot of people won't buy it or either will return it or they need to buy the whole base station setup, which also is not optimal. And lastly, they need to get a lot of developers on board with OpenXR, the eye um, tracked foveated the rendering, uh, maybe application space warp. I talked to them about this. They are not working on it yet, um, but I hope they passed the information down so application space warp could be supported. Don't mix it up with asynchronous space warp, which is on the PC side. Application space warp is more for the standalone side to get a big performance boost in uh, trade-off with latency. Next to that, it is overall a great headset. And yeah, the visuals are incredible as you are probably used to from Pimax. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the Pimax portal. And it is, I'm slightly less excited about this because I already own headsets and I already own a Switch and I can game on my phone. So this probably won't be something I would buy right now. But if I didn't have a Switch and also didn't have any VR sets, I would be very interested in by picking up the portal. And there are a few reasons why. First of all, it's just already a good gaming device for mobile gaming. So it has the controllers attached and you can map those on screen. And I'm not sure what inputs I use, if this is direct input, uh, X input or something entirely else. But overall, having a controller attached properly is great. And there is a big premium on a lot of standalone devices. So these qu can get quite expensive quite quickly. So at the price this device is on, it's already pretty great that it is fast, it is working on standalone, and it's a great mobile gaming device. Next to this is also great for emulation. It has the XR2 chipset in it, just like any other VR set at this point. And this has some pretty good performance. It is comparable to the Snapdragon 865. It just has some slight modifications for better VR support. But yeah, this is just a fast SoC. It's not the fastest, but it will get through all the games you want to play and even some emulation. So you can use Switch emulation to play any Switch games on it. And with that together, it's just an awesome console. The screen itself is also great. It is 4K at 144 Hertz. And on the mobile device, you probably are not complaining at all. Uh, 4K is a bit overkill. I'm not sure if they downscale the resolution. I would probably think so, or at least have a setting to do so because it does eat up a lot of battery life probably. Myself on my Sony Xperia, one Mark II, I have a 4K screen and it does eat a lot of battery. So that at 144 Hertz probably will have even more battery drainage. So I really hope you are able to tune it in software, um, but I can't confirm this um, at all. So one way to see is to wait till it is released. The screen is quite small. So while the screen is big, it is really small, smaller than most mobile phones. 
That was a bit of a bummer. There is an add-on, so you can clip the um, device itself into a bigger screen and then clip the controllers onto the side with a little cover. And then you have an 8.8 .8 inch screen, which is 2560 by 1600. So it's a bit uh, taller than 1440p and it runs at 120 hertz. So this is not as sharp as the smaller display at 4K. I'm not sure why they downgraded the resolution, but of course it's still an 8.8 .8 inch screen and you're not going to notice the quality at all. The screen is probably great, so not really much to complain there. It is less than the tablet itself, but the tablet itself also needs to support the VR uh, add-on. So yeah, that is just great if you want a bit of a bigger screen and just game on it handheld, which I probably find great to use because the screen is really too small to comfortably do handheld gaming on it all the time. So if you want to do handheld gaming for a longer time, you just clip it in there and it should just work fine. It also has a dock for TV output, just like the Switch, you put it in and you can put it out to a monitor or a TV. That again is pretty great and if you want to play together or just on a bigger screen that just works, which is really cool. The controllers worked fine for me, they are on the smaller side, so I have pretty big hands, which wasn't optimal for the controllers. With the XL cover screen where you can have a bigger screen, you can clip them into different controllers, so it is a bit bigger. I probably would find that preferable myself, um, since my hands are quite big and the controllers were really small. That aside, they worked fine. You can magnetically put them out of the console and put them back in. That worked fine without any issues, and you can even clip them together. And when they are clipped together, um, you can use it as one controller. Like the Switch has the little insert where you slide the controllers in. These just magnetically connect together, which work really well, and that's really cool. Next to that, they also state that there's a lot of good AR support for that set, and this is probably quite excited myself, um, because I work a lot with VR and AR um, in game development. And they promise a lot of high quality AR because you can use the main camera for color pass through and you can use the four tracking cameras to have better stability. So this is different than LiDAR, which the iPhone uses for better tracking to get the real depth information. Um, this uses the tracking cameras just like a VR headset to do the same in AR. And I'm really excited about how the tracking quality of this is and how it can improve AR experience as well. And another thing I wonder is if this also has AR support for the VR mode. So if you can pop it in the VR cover, then look through the AR camera, the color camera, and have color AR pass through just like the Pico 4. The Pico 4 also has a single RGB camera and uses that for the VR pass through and it works quite well. So I wonder if they also use this for XR support in the headset itself, which would be really cool. So going from AR to the actual VR side, um, and this is where I haven't been able to try it out that much. They had a single demo where you could put it in the cover and then you were able to walk around in a 3D environment. And that's a showcase that it actually does have the six depth of field VR mode. And that's probably also the thing which separates it from many mobile devices in VR, uh, like Google Cardboard, that generally, that generally was three depth of field. So you could just look around um, like that but you couldn't move your head around and that would not translate to the actual game. That is something which is actually included in this headset, which makes it a lot better for VR as well. So I was able to physically walk around in the 3D environment, but I didn't have any controller, so I could not track the tracking. The controllers itself, I was able to hold on my hands and they felt pretty decent. Not too expensive or fancy, but it was just working fine um, without actually trying it at the device. So yeah, the VR mode was quite good. The colors were good, and this is also because they had the QLED version. Uh, the FOV was fine. I just moved from the um, crystal to the portal, so I'm not sure if that was just me, but the FOV was similar to the Quest 2 or Pico 4, basically. They state that it is higher than the Pico 4 or Quest 2, um, but maybe it was because I stepped down from the crystal to the portal, but for me it seemed about the same, so in the same ballpark. I said the colors were fine and the uh, uh, resolution also was fine. I wasn't able to see any screen door effect, so that was great. It wasn't as clear as the crystal, of course. That's logical. Um, but yeah, it was just pretty good. Sadly, it Bradley did say in his video that it doesn't have a low persistence screen mode. And this is something which is really important for VR because not having this can add more motion blur and more nausea. 
I did not notice this myself immediately, but it is something to keep in mind and Pico has not said anything about it since. And I, Zed Leeds Bradley made the video after I tried it, so I couldn't confirm this with Pico at all. Um, but if there, there are any updates, I will leave it in a pinned comment down below. So make sure to check that out as well. So what are the deal breakers or pros and cons of this device? Probably the biggest thing is that it's just a great standalone gaming device. You can play all the Android games on it with controller support. You can use emulators, you can use streaming services. And because of this, it's for some people already worth the price because a fast device with a great screen and detachable controllers like this is really hard to find. Next to that for the VR mode, um, there are a few concerns. First of all, the controller tracking. This is a make it or break it for VR. If this works properly, that's amazing. If this doesn't work great, then yeah, then it's not going to do well for VR. Next to that is the low persistence display. Not sure if this is something they are working on or this is a software issue. That's something for Pimax to figure out. Again, if I do get a reply from them, I will leave it in the comments below. Next to that for VR, we also need a lot more game support. So as with the Crystal, OpenXR support, maybe the application space warp. This is less important since it doesn't have any crazy high resolutions. Um, but stuff like that, OpenXR especially, is just really important to get developers on board. I think they were also working on this for the portal. They did confirm it on the Crystal. Um, so that's also a thing. It has to have VR games in order to, well, work as a VR console. And I really hope that they are not limiting to any Google Cardboard games, um, but that they actually have a standalone VR section where I can play six depth of field games, which are made for VR with controllers. So that's the main takeaway for me. If you have any questions, how this compared to any of the headset I've tried, or if you have any questions about the details about the headsets, feel free to let me know in the comments. I will help you out. Maybe I can even ask Pimax themselves if they have any more information about this and I will get back to you. Let me over there and I will see you in the next video.